Welcome, my name's Deborah Walker and I'm speaking to you from Revival from Down Under, which is a Christian church located in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne in Australia. So I'd like to welcome you all and it's good to have you joining with us. And as we come around God's word, he says, I've magnified my word above all my name. So hallelujah, we're going to look into God's word and uh, just find out a bit more about what God is like. Hallelujah. And I've called this topic Faithful Believers. Faithful Believers believers hallelujah and uh, let's just open our bibles to hebrews chapter 6 reading from the king james bible hebrews chapter 6 and verse 18 and it says here that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for god to lie we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us hallelujah Hallelujah. Because it is impossible for God to lie, what we read of him in the Bible is true. So what applies to God also applies to us as his followers. And we are growing up spiritually into his likeness. And being faithful is one of the characteristics of God. And according to the Oxford Dictionary, being faithful, it means to be loyal, constant to one's word, like you keep your word, uh, conscientious, trustworthy, and true to fact. Hallelujah. We're not de God doesn't deviate. He's not one thing one day and something the other. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. No shadow of turning. He's the same. Hallelujah. And when God says something in his word, it means he stands behind it and he wants to perform his word. And so God has declared how things are to be. And as we read his word and get understanding, it, uh, and it changes our lives for the better. And so we're going to look into his word tonight. So firstly, God is faithful. So let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and we read here in verse 9 Deuteronomy 7 verse 9 and we read here know therefore that the Lord thy God he is God the faithful God which keeps covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Hallelujah. And this word faithful in the Hebrew, it actually means to be firm, to be trust, to trust, to believe, to be permanent. God is permanent, right? To be morally true and certain. God's standards have never changed. It means to be established, steadfast, Assurance, we can have assurance in him, can't we? To be sure and verified and to turn to the right. Hallelujah. God is sure and steadfast. Hallelujah. And let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 9. And we read here. God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And that word faithful in the Greek, it actually means trustworthy, faithful, trustful, sure, and true. This is what God is like. Trustworthy, faithful, trustful, sure, and true. And the Amplified says for that verse, God is faithful, reliable, trustworthy, and therefore ever true to his promise. God has promised a lot through his word, but he's true. He backs it and he can be depended on. By him you were called into companionship and participation with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. God does the calling and it's the goodness of God that he's drawn us to himself. 
and God's words are faithful. Let's turn to Psalms. Psalms 119 and verse 86. And it says, All thy commandments are faithful. They persecute me wrongfully, help thou me. All God's words are faithful. Hallelujah. And Psalm 119 verse 138, it says here, Thy testimonies that thou hast commanded are righteous and very faithful. Hallelujah. Very faithful. Amen. God's words are true and faithful. Let's turn to Isaiah 25. It's throughout the whole book and all scripture is profitable to us. Isaiah 25. Isaiah 25 and verse 1. It says, O Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name. For thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. And the Amplified says, O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, even purposes planned of old and fulfilled in faithfulness and truth. What God has said, must come to pass if you've had even as you've had might have had prophecies over your life if it was god it shall come to pass he's faithful to watch over his word to perform it hallelujah let's turn to revelation 21 revelation 21 and verse 5 and it says and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, so he was speaking to John, Write, for these words are true and faithful. So faithful, they're sure, they're definite, they're reliable. Hallelujah. And the Amplified says, And he who is seated on the throne said, See, I make all things new. Also, he said, Record this. For these sayings are faithful, accurate, incorruptible, and trustworthy, and true, genuine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's faithfulness is also great. Hallelujah. Let's turn to Lamentations, which is just after Jeremiah. Lamentations. Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 22 to 23. And we read here, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. He's so compassionate. They are new every morning. This is his mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah. Great is thy faithfulness. And the Amplified says, it is because of the Lord's mercy and loving kindness that we are not consumed. Because his tender compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great and abundant is your stability and faithfulness. Hallelujah. We just, this is going to uh, encourage us. The word of God goes into our heart. And this word on faithfulness, it's going to strengthen us to understand who God is, that what he who he is and what he stands behind and his word by faith comes by hearing the word, doesn't it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So let's turn to first John chapter one, first John chapter one and verse nine. And we read here. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He's faithful. Like, could you imagine if you were confessing your sins and God says, no, I'm not going to forgive that today. No, no, I don't think so. No, that's not who he is. He is 
faithful. He's the same. And when we are repentant, when we are sincerely, sincerely repenting, he is faithful to forgive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Amplified brings it out further. If we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, he is faithful and just, true to his own nature and promises, and will forgive our sins, dismiss our lawlessness, and continuously cleanse us from all unrighteousness, everything not in conformity to his will in purpose, thought, and action. I mean, he is just so faithful, and he's the same. Hallelujah. And we read, God is faithful even during temptation. Let's turn back to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. And we read here, There is no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able but will with the temptation also make a way of a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. And the Amplified says, verse 13, For no temptation, no trial regarded as enticing to sin, no matter how it comes or where it leads, has overtaken you and laid hold on you that is not common to man. That is, no temptation or trial has come to you that is beyond human resistance and that is not adjusted and adapted and belonging to human experience and such as man can bear. But God is faithful to his word and to his compassionate nature and he can be trusted not to let you be tempted and tried and assayed beyond your ability and strength of resistance and power to endure. But with the temptation, he will always and also provide the way out, the means of escape to a landing place that you may be capable and strong and powerful to bear up under it patiently. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God knows how to make a way. Even when the testings and the trials come our way, he's faithful. And uh, if we just look to him, he will make a way. If we just want to continue and stay in that little uh, situation, then... God will say, well, then you, you stay there if you like. But God will say, God is saying he's faithful. And when we're going through the trials, we can look to him and he is with us. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And lo, I'm with you always. He's with us in the situations. And uh, to give us that strength, to give that empowerment, to overcome all situations. Hallelujah. Because everything in our heart is going to get tested. And if there's a temptation, it means there's something in our heart that can be enticed. And so the Lord is going to allow situations where, you know, something may um, attempt us, tempt us to uh, sin. And yet God wants to fortify that area in that pocket. If the enemy's got an area and access to our heart, then God wants to fortify that area in our heart. And God will make a way of an escape. He will empower us, strengthen us to say no or make a, make the good choice. And uh, But it's part of our relationship with him. When we just walk in close with him, you know, God's with us. And um, we used to have a saying with the young people that, you know, you, what would you, you, you wouldn't want to do anything that you wouldn't do in front of Jim or me. I mean, we're nothing compared to God, of course, but it was a measuring so that everything we would do, anything that anybody would do, any of the young ones, they would be, they would only be doing things that they would be comfortable to be doing in front of Jim and me. But having said that, we are adults, and so God sees everything. There's nothing hidden, and things done in secret will eventually be shouted from the rooftop if they are not repented of. So we just need to be aware that uh, the enemy does try to set us up to cause us to fall. He did tempt Jesus, but he said in Jesus, Jesus just used the word and overcame every time. And that's how God wants us to be too, to be overcomers. Hallelujah. All right. God is faithful and it is he that calls you. So if we turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 24. And we read here and it says, faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Hallelujah. 
And the Amplified says, Faithful is he who is calling you to himself and utterly trustworthy. And he will also do it. Fulfill his call by hallowing and keeping you. God does the calling. God does the calling. He has his hand on our lives, even from a youngster. In fact, he even knows us in our mother's womb. He does the calling. And sometimes it takes people a long time to just finally come around because they just don't, you know, they, you know, and, but God is so faithful. He won't stop calling. He will just keep drawing people to himself, bringing people across their pathway and just keeping wanting people to come to himself. Hallelujah. He's faithful and he does the calling and he does the calling because he has a purpose for every life and whatever your uh, part is in the body, then if you are faithful to it, then that's all you will need to do or be. You don't have to be something you're not. God just calls and has a plan for every person. And this person's life is different to this person, just like we all have different DNA. That is how diverse God's plan is for everybody. And, you know, it's just so wonderful. God, so God does the calling and he does the empowering and the equipping. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, and God is faithful to establish you. So 2 Thessalonians, just over the page, chapter 3, verse 3, and we read here, but the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Isn't that wonderful? Amplified says, yet the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and set you on a firm foundation and guard you from the evil one. Right, what's the firm foundation? It's the rock. What's his name? Jesus Christ, he's the rock. And who's Jesus? He's the word. And that's the foundation that we anchor our lives on in the word of God. Hallelujah. And everything else around us can be sinking, shaking sand, but the word of God abides forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so God is like a rock. He's firm, impenetrable, like a rock in times of trouble. He's like it all the time. But sometimes we might be, uh, you know, in, in, the, in the situation. And, but if we can just anchor into that rock, it'll be all right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Um, now that we've talked a bit about God, we're just going to talk about Jesus just a bit. Uh, Jesus is our faithful high priest. So let's turn over to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17. And we read here. Wherefore, in all things, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. So we're talking about Jesus here, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of people. And the Amplified says, so it is evident that it was essential that he be made like his brethren in every respect. I mean, Jesus did it as a man. Yes, he was God, but he lived and walked as a man. So he understands man all right and uh, he's he was like his brethren in every respect in order that he might become a merciful merciful sympathetic and faithful high priest in the things related to god to make atonement and propitiation for the people's sins all right he, that's why he's a faithful high priest he knows what it's like to have a tough day he knows what it's like to have people lying he knows what it's like to have a feel like you've been beat up he knows what it like is to be with the warfare he knows what it's like when the buffeting comes he knows what it's like when the storms come he understands and when we run to him it's a safe place it's a sure place and he just uh he's just there for us hallelujah and Jesus is the faithful witness. Let's turn over to Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. And we read here, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, we're the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And the Amplified says, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful and trustworthy witness, the firstborn of the dead. All right. He rose from the dead. Hallelujah. First to be brought back to life and the prince ruler of the kings of the earth to him who ever loves us and has once for all loosed and freed us from our sins by his own blood. Hallelujah. He did that for each one of us. 
He's so wonderful. He's so wonderful. And Jesus is faithful and true. Just while we're here, let's turn to Revelation chapter 19 and verse 11. And we read here, this is John saying, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness, he does judge and make war. I like how the Amplified brings that out even a bit further. After that, I saw heaven opened and behold, a white horse appeared. The one who was riding it is called faithful, trustworthy, loyal, incorruptible, steady and true. And he passes judgment and wages war in righteousness. Holiness, justice, and uprightness. All right? He, he wages war because of his righteousness. There is going to be an account for every life. And it's because of God's righteousness that he's going to do it. Hallelujah. And then we just read down into verses 12 and 12 to 14. His eyes, his eyes were as a, flaming, a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed, followed him upon white horses. So the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. If we want to ride with Christ, at his return, we will need to be faithful. Now, we're growing into it. And uh, some people perhaps find it easier than others. But, you know, we're all made of the same dust. And so God is fashioning us. He's a good potter. We're the clay. We're the vessels of clay that he wants to fill us up with himself. Who's he? He's the word of God. And so he's fashioning us for his glory but as i said if we want to be with him riding with him at the end in those armies he's faithful and true and that's exactly what he's going to do a fullness in each one of us hallelujah it's worth it's going to be worth staying in staying with it and just keep pressing into him hallelujah all right so that's god that's jesus and now it's our turn as believers are we faithful and just as the Bible reveals being faithful is one of the characteristics of God, so too it reveals the importance that God places on believers to be faithful. Why? Because we're meant to be growing up into his likeness and he's faithful. So he desires that in us, in us as well. Hallelujah. All right. First of all, we just read about a faithful priest and we've been called to be priests, haven't we? We're a royal priesthood. Hallelujah. And we just turn over to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. So the Samuel before Kings and Chronicles, 1 Samuel in the Old Testament, chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 35. And this is what the uh, man of God said. And I will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in my heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house and he shall walk before mine anointed forever. A faithful priest. We have a calling on our lives to be priests under God, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy priesthood to offer sacrifices. Hallelujah. And those sacrifices are many different things, as including our prayer life. Hallelujah. Our worship and praise to the Lord. It's a sacrifice and yet it comes from our heart. So it's a wonderful thing. And so praise God. We need to be faithful in our, priest, in our priesthood. Hallelujah. We'll talk about priesthood another time. But priesthood is really important before God. And we've called, we're part of that. Hallelujah. In fact, we've been called to be part, not of the Levitical, which is the Old Testament, but through Jesus Christ, we're part of the Melchizedek order, which is a priesthood of eternal, it's an eternal priesthood. Right? The Levitical came for a season and then it was done away with. But then... God brought in the Melchizedek, but it was the Melchizedek because it was Melchizedek that met Abraham right back in Genesis. Then he put in the Levitical, see if they could do it, nothing do it. 
but God knew that. And then so right through here, through Jesus Christ, back to Melchizedek again. It's an eternal priesthood. And that's the high calling we have on our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Let's. Um, we need to be faithful and faultless representatives. Let's turn over to Daniel chapter 6. This, this should sort of um, speak to our hearts as we go through this section. You know, Lord, we want to we measure up to your word. We're not comparing ourselves with each other. Lord, you're the measuring rod. You're the measuring reed. The, you set the plummet line. Lord, we want to measure up to you. And Daniel chapter 6, verse 4, and it says, Then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. What an amazing man of God, Daniel. He was faithful and neither was there any error or fault found in him. Hallelujah. What a wonderful man. Hallelujah. Lord, do it in our hearts. Thank you, Lord. All right. And uh, faithful people are placed in leadership. So let's turn over to Nehemiah, which is um, just after Chronicles. So Nehemiah, Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 7 and verse 2. And it says, verse 2, that I gave my brother Hanai and Hananiah, the ruler of the palace, charge over Jerusalem for he was a faithful man and feared God above many all right he was given responsibility because he was a faithful man and he reverenced God hallelujah hallelujah above anything above everything else he reverenced God so you know what a man so no wonder he was given responsibility over Jerusalem praise God Praise God. Hallelujah. And also in Nehemiah chapter 13, faith, we need to be faithful in handing, handling money and serving. Nehemiah chapter 13 and verse 13. And it says here, and I, this is Nehemiah, and I made treasurers over the treasuries. Shelemiah the priest and Zadok the the scribe and of the Levites, Pedadiah, or Pedaiah, and next to them was Hanan, the son of Zakur, the son of Mataniah, for they were counted faithful, and their office was to distribute unto their brethren. Their office was, they were faithful, and their office was to distribute unto their brethren. All right. Now, these days, a lot of uh, in churches and so forth, of course, there's a lot of handling of money. But it's not just money. It could be whatever responsibility God has given to us. Are we faithful with it? Are we doing it correctly as unto the Lord? You know, it might be distribution of foods or clothing to the poor or, or whatever, our, whatever the Lord leads us to do. We need to be faithful to it reliable sure about it steadfast you know they just know they just know that yeah if you've given it to this person to do it you'll know it'll get done no two shadows of doubts about it you know if this person's on the job it's going to happen that's how we're to be we're meant to be faithful reliable hallelujah and uh, i just thought that was lovely they were counted faithful and their office was to distribute so hallelujah we need to be faithful in how we handle things and how we serve. Hallelujah. And let's turn over to Psalm 31. And we're going to read here that the faithful are preserved by God. That's a good thing, isn't it? <laughs> Who wants to be preserved by God? We all do. Psalm 31, verse 23. It says, O love the Lord, all ye saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. Mm, hallelujah. He preserves the faithful. And the Amplified says, O love the Lord, all you his saints. The Lord preserves the faithful and plentifully pays back 
him who deals haughtily. All right, so it's really God really puts a measurement or a weight, if I can say it that way, on being faithful. And he's going to take care of the faithful. He's put it in his word. Remember, we said God can't lie. So if we're faithful, we will be preserved no matter what goes on around about us. God will take care of us because that's his word. It's in black and white and we've got his word on it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And also it says, let's turn over to Psalm 101. Psalm 101 and verse 6. It says here that the faithful are watched over. Psalm 106, 101 verse 6, it says, My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. And the Amplified says, My eyes shall look with favor upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He who walks blamelessly, he shall minister to me. Wonderful, isn't it? Just there's favor. You know, we just want to walk in a perfect way before God, walking softly before God, humbly before God. Remember that scripture we read the other day, showing the old man what is good, what the Lord requires of you to do, do justly, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Hallelujah. So his eyes are upon the faithful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because... Um, because actually that faithfulness, we minister to him. We, he wants us to dwell with him and be blameless before him and minister to him. Hallelujah. 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 All right, let's turn over to Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14. Uh, we need to be a faithful person. Proverbs 14 verse 5. It says here, A faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lies it's pretty clear isn't it and we know in revelation no liar is going to heaven unless they repent all right but if they don't repent it says no liar is going to heaven and the scripture also says all men are liars now you might think well i'm not a liar how can you say that well the scripture says all men are liars and so it may not be like a a big lie, like some people say, a big lie. I didn't really do a big lie. It was just a little white lie. Well, God doesn't have shades. <laughs> God doesn't have shades of white to black. There are no shades. It's either white or black. And uh, even deceit, you know, just withholding some of the facts is a lie. It's deceitful. And a person can get a wrong impression because we don't tell them the whole situation. So that's deceitful. And so that's not a good, that's not okay either. So it doesn't matter who you are, and point, pointing to myself as well, it doesn't matter who we are on the planet, all lives are going to go to the lake. So we need to make sure that everything that comes out of our mouth is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Please help us, God. Hallelujah. We need to be telling the truth all the time. Hallelujah. And uh, so that's all good. And that was Proverbs chapter 14. Uh, what was that one? A faithful witness. That's right. Will not lie. All right. A faithful spirit. Proverbs 11 verse 13. Just back a little. And it says here, you'll get it in the Amplified. It says verse 13. The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips. There we are. Lying lips. But the just shall come out of trouble. The Amplified says the wicked is dangerously snared by the transgression of his lips, but the uncompromisingly righteous shall come out of trouble. Uncompromisingly righteous. Proverbs 11.13. Oh, I just read the wrong scripture, didn't I? Excuse me. Proverbs 11.13. It says, A talebearer reveals secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit conceals the matter. Hallelujah. And the Amplified says, He who goes about as a tail bearer, bearer reveals secrets, but he who is trustworthy and faithful in spirit keeps the matter hidden. Hallelujah. We need to be able to know how to. If someone um, discloses something to us that's very personal, very private, that we just keep that to ourselves. All right. We don't just let everybody know about it. Uh, 
So we just need to be aware that we have need to be of a faithful uh, spirit. Hallelujah. Proverbs 20, it says about a faithful man. Proverbs 20 and verse 6, it says, Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. And the Amplified says, Many a man proclaims his own loving kindness and goodness, but a faithful man who can find. So I take from that, there's a lot of people that might do a lot of talking, but faithfulness amongst all the chatter and amongst all that goes on in life. How many really, truly faithful people before God and before others are there really? And so God's putting this in our heart tonight. He's putting it in his heart. This is what he wants in us because that's who he is. He's putting it in our heart. Hallelujah. So, so that he can find us. Hallelujah. We want to be one of those faithful ones that he can find. And Proverbs 28, we read here that the faithful, Proverbs 28 verse 20, it says the faithful abound with blessings. 28 verse 20. A faithful man shall abound with blessings. But he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. The Amplified says, A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he who makes haste to be rich at any cost shall not go unpunished. You know, we've, we've got to keep our eyes on the Lord. Some people are tempted, enticed, snared to do a quick way, maybe a, a dishonest way. And, and, it, and if it's dishonest, there are going to be repercussions consequences and so that's not God's way he wants it all in the light and uh, when we do it God's way then his blessings can come upon us hey why because we'll be faithful and he just said a faithful man shall abound with blessings hallelujah all right uh, Proverbs chapter 13 verse 17 it says here that a faithful bring healing to others so Proverbs 13 verse 17 second says a wicked messenger falleth into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is health. A wicked messenger falls into mischief. The Amplified says, a wicked messenger falls into evil, but a faithful ambassador brings healing. So we want our words to be life-giving, to be uplifting, to be healing words to be encouraging words, not critical words, not demanding words, just um, good words, good words, hallelujah, faithful words, merciful words, kind words, words seasoned with the love of God, hallelujah. All right, let's turn over to Isaiah chapter 1, Isaiah chapter 1, and it says here that the faithful are called the city of righteousness, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 26 it says here, and I will restore thy judges as at the first and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The city of righteousness. It's going to be Zion, which speaks of the bride of Christ. It's a city. She's a city and she's faithful. Hallelujah. God's bride. He's not marrying a harlot who somebody's, you know, out and about. He's going to marry a bride, join to her, because she's going to be faithful, faithful to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hmm. A city of righteousness and a faithful city. Hallelujah. And God's doing it in us. It's encouraging, isn't it? God's doing it. All right. What about, are we a faithful servant? Let's turn over to Matthew 24. Matthew 24 and verse 45. This is what Jesus says. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord has made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? And the Amplified says, Who then is the faithful, thoughtful and wise servant whom his master has put in charge of his household to give to the others the food and supplies at the proper time? Right? Are we a faithful and wise servant? And when we're a faithful and wise servant, he's going to give us meat. Meat speaks of the word of God. If we're faithful and wise in God, 
He's not going to withhold the meat. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's purpose in everything God does. And so, and also he'll make us ruler over his household, over our individual households, perhaps his household, other households. He'll give us responsibility because we are faithful. You know, faithfulness is just such a prerequisite for doing things in God. If you want to be used by God, he's going to test you and prove you with the little things to see if you're faithful. All right. And uh, just while we're here, Matthew 25, verse 15, are we faithful handling money? Similar to what we read before, but let's look at it from this scripture. And verse 15, 25, verse 15. And to one he gave five talents. Now, talents is money. We're not talking about abilities. It's actually the, the money, right? He gave five talents to another two and to another one, to every man according to his several abilities. Like everybody has different abilities, okay? And straightway took his journey. And then verse in 19 to 21, it says, And after a long time, the Lord of those servants comes and reckons with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought another five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. And we can read on with the others another time. But if we're faithful, he says, well done, good and faithful servant. And if you're faithful with the little things, I'll make you ruler over many things. That's his word. That's his word. You know, and God, you know, as I've observed things over the time, because he says he doesn't choose the wise and mighty. He chooses the meek and the weak and the, the humble and the, Perhaps the ones with perhaps not the big talents or the big, because people with big ability rely on their ability. People who see themselves with not a lot rely on God. And that's how he just wants it. And, uh, and so it's not about ability. It's about faithfulness. And when we are faithful in God, he knows he can, uh, we're, we're trustworthy. And then his plan just keeps opening up more and more. Very wonderful. Hallelujah. And faithful with the least. So let's turn over to Mark, sorry, Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16, verse 10. Luke 16. And verse 10. And we read here. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in in the least is unjust also in much. And the Amplified says, He who is faithful in a very little thing is faithful also in much. And he who is dishonest and unjust in a very little thing is dishonest and unjust also in much. Wow, it's pretty clear, isn't it? And in verse 11, if therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to you, you who will commit to you your trust the true riches? And the Amplified says, Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the case of unrighteous mammon, deceitful riches, money, possessions, who will entrust to you the true riches? All right, true riches, you know, may speak of God's money, of course, but I believe more so it speaks of the word of God and God is seeing how we handle things and money is a really big test how people handle money uh, it's God it's it's probably a real pocket in many people's lives because people think it's their money let me just clear that everything belongs to God <laughs> he just allows us to have use of it and so even when it comes to offering times, Lord, what would you have me give? You know, we just need to understand it's all his and he gives it to us to see how we're going to do with it. What, are we going to spend it wisely? Are we going to be good stewards? Are we going to give it into the gospel? Are we going to just spend it all on ourselves? Are we going to help others? Uh, what are we going to do with it? And so he just wants to know 
you know, can we pass the money test? And if we do, if we can be faithful with the little, then he's allowed to allow, well, in the money, he can allow more money to come into our hands because he you knows if we can handle this amount of money well, then he knows we can handle that amount of money well. And we could handle that amount of money well. What do we do with it? And so um, I'll just give an example. It's just kind of me like, if you gave a child $100,000, what would they go and do with it? They'd buy a real lot of lollies, probably. <laughs> They'd just buy lollies because they're a child. But when we grow spiritually in God, we will be thinking about the kingdom of God. We will be thinking how to be a blessing to others in the kingdom of God, how to reach others, use money for to reach others for salvation, for eternal matters. Hallelujah. And it wouldn't be just, God doesn't mind us spending some money on ourselves and we do live in a natural world and we have bills and, and um, commitments that we need to meet, of course. And it's, but he also gives us usually above and beyond that. And he wants to see what are we going to do with it? And uh, we can't be giving to the kingdom of God and not pay our electricity bill. Because he wants us to be wise servants. He wants us to be faithful servants, wise. That wouldn't be wise. It's not even walking in love. You, yes, you're walking in love. Yes, I'm going to give it to the kingdom and I'm going to give it to an orphanage. And that's a good thing. But if you haven't paid your electricity bill, then, you know, and imagine if everybody did that, then the people who work the electricity company, they don't get paid their salaries. And that's not walking in love because they're going to miss out on food, putting up food on their table. So we've got to do things in balance, but we've also got to be wise in God. And we're growing in God. And as we grow in God, we will learn more exactly what God would have us to do. He gives us understanding a lot in his Bible of what to do. And then there's also that leading by God, you know, how much to give to this or how to treat this or are we willing to do this? He, he, it's, he's equipping us spiritually as we grow in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, uh, in Luke chapter 19, let's first turn over to Luke chapter 19 and verse 17. The faithful are rewarded. All right, Luke 19 verse 17. And we read here. And it's similar to what we've just read. And he said unto him, well, he said unto him, well, thou good servant, because thou has been faithful in a very little, have thou authority over ten cities. And the Amplified says, And he said unto him, Well done, excellent bond servant, because you have been faithful and trustworthy in a very little thing, you shall have authority over ten cities. All right. Faithful with a little, authority over ten cities. It's a big jump, isn't it? But if you're faithful with a little, he, God knows he can handle you. You know, and in the natural, now I'm just going to give an example here. In the natural, God proves and tests us with the little to see if we are trustworthy with the responsibility already given to us. Often our employment is an excellent training ground. Employment puts us with people we enjoy working with and possibly with some who we may not find so easy to work alongside of. As an employee, are we reliable trustworthy, conscientious in the workplace. We turn up on time, don't take extra long lunches. You know, we, we do, we work within the framework of what our job requires. Hallelujah. You know, and do we stay to the end of the project or withdraw halfway through? And being faithful, it produces steadfastness and persistence of character. Just the same. And you might think, oh, this, this job, round we go again. Well, you know, that's how a potter fashions a vessel on the potter's wheel. And they go round and around and around and around. And sometimes a person's job could be off to work, home from work, off to work, home from work, off to work, home. Yeah, going seemingly round and round and round. But through that, God actually puts us with people around us. He's testing us. He's seeing us. What's our attitude like? Are we walking in love? 
Are we grumbling about the boss, you know, just to see how we do it? And, uh, and uh, the employee and, and uh, others, co-workers, you know, how he just wants to see and he puts us amongst people. And because uh, if we're on our own, then there's not a lot of opposition, right? There may be spiritual opposition, but it's when we mix with other people, there's different dynamics. And um, sometimes we rub a bit. Hallelujah. And that's God's plan because he's trying to smooth off our rough edges. Hallelujah. Nobody is just like us. That's just how it is. And so sometimes, you know, you might come across people as a bit crash. Look, it might even be in church sometimes. Crash, crash. And God's just knocking off the rough edges. Hallelujah. He's a great potter. He's a faithful potter. Hallelujah. All right. And what about our manager? Well, you know, over the years I've had different managers. Whew. Some I've really enjoyed with and some, honestly, perhaps not quite as enjoyable. However, God places authorities in our lives and truly it's not about the person, but more importantly, it's rather the position they hold. If they're our manager, that's it. And, you know, are we respectful and able to follow their instruction? Whether we, it's not about whether we like them or don't like them. It's that's their position. And are we respectful and able to do the task that they've asked us to do? You know, God uses the word obey. All right. When, on employment, you just got to do your job. Do your job. If that's what the job requires, we just do the job. And God is changing us into his likeness. I was just thinking, uh, just before I go on further, I'll just say about like in an army, you know, they train squads of people in the army. I've only seen it on the television and they have to do everything in line, on sync, up, bang. They're just, they're not allowed to even ask questions. They just have to do as they're told, do as they're told. Do as they're told. Why? Because if they don't, it could cost them their life or their colleagues' lives on the battlefield. They have to be absolutely so, uh, so in tune with obeying the orders no questions asked, just do it because people's lives can be at, at risk. And so employment, which of course is not a battleground usually, but sometimes it can be a bit of a battleground because we meet these different people. We may not be out on the front line, literally on a battle, but sometimes in the workplace, we can feel like we're on a battleground. And yet, you know, God's, um, God's, God's with us and he's just allowing things in our life. And uh, we know that scripture, all things work together for good, because sometimes we think, not sure about this. But he said, because we love God, he'll work all things together for go good. And many years ago, I recall hearing a minister say that if we do not learn what God is trying to teach us through our current manager, then God will give us a worse manager in our next role. So just when you think it couldn't get any worse, it can. Why? Because God is changing us into his image. And so once I heard that, that, you know, I could get a worse role, the next manager could be worse than this, you know, what I perceive to be this one. Um, I just would pray, Lord, please do what you need to do in me. That so it will prepare me, you know, just do what you need to do with me. Just do what you need to do. If, I've, if my attitude is not as it should be, Lord, just do it in me. Just adjust me, please. Just adjust me because I don't want to be in the worst one, <laughs> right? And so sometimes, you know, God's, you know, we might be hitting these brick walls, but God's actually trying to change us, not them. He's using them, but he's trying to change us. And sometimes we just need to say, Lord, what are you, are you putting your finger on something in my heart? Lord, is there something you want to change in me? So, you know, when we just get honest before God and, um, and so we want to be God allowing, allowing God to prepare us for the next role. Hallelujah. That will be more enjoyable, hopefully. Hallelujah. If we pass the test on this round. Hallelujah. And, you know, and also we're exhorted in, in the word to pray for those in authority. And that's just not for leaders only of, ma of nations. But what about our everyday manager on the job, on the workplace? You know, we can pray for them. You realize you might be the only person praying for that person who has ever prayed for that person. That's a bit of a challenge, isn't it? And how much, you know, if, they don't, if they're not saved, well, how tough is that? They're trying to live a life without God in it. Well, that's very tough. And so if they take it out on people, well, that's quite understandable. 
So we need to stand in the gap and pray for them, believe for them to be saved. And who knows, we might be the very person God uses. Hallelujah. All right. And just look while we're over here, Colossians chapter 3, speaking of the workplace or, or whatever our situation is. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 23, it says, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. And the Amplified says, Servants, obey in everything those who are your earthly masters, not only when their eyes are on you as pleasers of men, but in simplicity of purpose with all your heart because of your reverence for the Lord and as a sincere expression of your devotion to him. All right, so you may have a manager, but when you go to work, who are you working for? The Lord. The Lord. So the Lord's with us on the job. He's given us abilities on the job. And so we are working for the Lord. And so, you know, we just need to keep things in perspective sometimes. Hallelujah. And so when we pass the small tests, then we will develop character to be able to carry more responsibility as the Lord makes a way. Hallelujah. While we're here, let's turn back to Galatians chapter 3 and verse 9. It says, faithful at being of faith are blessed. I'll explain that. Galatians chapter 3 verse 9. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. So we're to be of people of faith. The Amplified says, so then those who are people of faith, are blessed and made happy and favoured by God as partners in fellowship with the believing and trusting Abraham. Abraham is the father of all who believe. He was a blessed man. Why? Because he walked with God. And so as believers, we're of the seed, the spiritual seed of Abraham, and God desires to bless our lives. And blessings come in all different ways. Health is a blessing. Salvation is a blessing. Uh, peace is a blessing. Joy is a blessing. It's not always money. It's not always about material things. You know, some people who are so sick, they'd give anything to be well. And we already have health. So, you know, and God's made a way for people to be healed. And it's going to take faith and believe in God's word. Hallelujah. All right, let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And God wants to be, us to be faithful stewards. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. And it says here, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. A steward is someone entrusted over the management of someone else's property, especially a paid manager of a great house. I was thinking, you know, God has his house and uh, God knows how to play, pay, look after his employees his ministries. Hallelujah. But a steward, and we are stewards uh, individually, our house, you know, just um, are we good stewards and the, are we faithful? And the Amplified says, moreover, it is essentially required of stewards that a man should be found faithful, proving himself worthy of trust. So, you know, whatever we're doing, are we faithful to it and worthy to be trusted? Can we be trusted? I mean, we want to trust God, but can we be trusted? Are we faithful? Hallelujah. God's doing it in us. Hallelujah. All right, let's turn over to 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3. And we read here about 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 11 about faithful wives. And it says here, even so must their wives be grave, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. And the Amplified says, the women likewise must be worthy of respect. So these are the wives and serious, not gossipers, but temperate and self-controlled, thoroughly trustworthy in all things. It's about the wives. And what about faithful children? Into Titus, Titus. Just a bit further over, Titus chapter 1 and verse 6. 
And we read here, If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of right or unruly. I'll just, before I go on to that, I'll just say the husband of one wife, you know, sometimes when we've traveled overseas, some nations think it's okay to have multiple wives. But when people come and are saved, they need the wisdom of God because God meant husbands to just have one wife. And uh, anyway, and I've seen God work things out. It's been amazing. And the wisdom of God has prevailed. And, uh, and, and as lives conform to God's word. And the Amplified says, so it says, but having faithful children, that was the point here though, getting to faithful children. And the Amplified says, these elders should be men who are unquestionable, of unquestionable integrity. Doesn't that sound great? There's so much um, corruption in the world and, and many different things go, you know, happen. But look at this, how elders in God's church, unquestionable integrity and irreproachable. The husband of but one wife whose children are well-trained and are believers, not open to the accusation of being loose in morals and conduct or unruly and disorderly. All right, so in God's word, he, he covers all the bases, all the situations. All right, let's turn back to Ephesians chapter 1. He wants us to be uh, faithful believers. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1, it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. So here he's writing a letter to the people of Ephesus there and he says to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Amplified says, Paul, an apostle, special messenger of Christ Jesus, the Messiah, by the divine will, the purpose and the choice of God to the saints, the consecrated set apart ones at Ephesus who are also faithful and loyal and steadfast in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. That's the people at Ephesus. Hallelujah. What a great church. And uh, Colossians chapter 1. We just turn over Colossians chapter 1. We read what he says here. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 2. And he says he is to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amplified says... To the saints, the consecrated people of God and believers and faithful brethren in Christ who are at Kololose, grace, spiritual favor and blessing to you and heart peace from God our Father. Hallelujah. So that church is doing really well. So, you know, and God wants every church to do really well. Hallelujah. All right, let's turn over to 3 John chapter 1, verse 5. And it says, we are to be faithful with the brethren and strangers. 3 John. Chapter third John, chapter one, verse five. And it says here, Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers. Hmm. Hallelujah. Strangers. And we have to use wisdom and be led of God. It's easy to perhaps look after people or, you know, reach out or help people that you do know. But it also says strangers here, but you need to get it in God. You've got to get it in God because, um, you know, some people, because we have, uh, we are kind hearted, some people would like to take advantage of that. And so we just need to be wise and just be led of God when how we're dealing with people, especially people we don't know. And uh, the Amplified says, beloved, it is a fine and faithful work that you are doing when you give any service to the Christian brethren. That's make it clear, doesn't it? And especially when they are strangers. Okay, so, you know, everybody before they come to God is a stranger. And so sometimes God might want to use us to just speak to somebody, sow a seed about the gospel or help them in a certain way. You know, just being led of God. That's the key, just being led of God. And so, you know, God watches how we treat people around about us, you know. And um, I remember years ago, and I'll just, this just come to me that, you know, when we first started in ministry, we met another ministry and he said he used to get lots of emails in his inbox. People, you know, from poorer nations always wanting money. And of course, money helps every nation, but every person in every nation and, but what did he do? He would just hit the delete key. Delete, 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 delete. And, um, you know, 
Jim and I just couldn't quite come at that because, you know, we read the scripture where Jesus said, if you've done it unto the least, you've done it unto me, unto Jesus. And so with God's help, I mean, I'm not perfect, but I, with God's help, I've always endeavored we have a um, to respond to every email that comes into the inbox because, you know, we've done it to the least, we've done it unto Jesus. So it takes more time. But if they're in the body of Christ, and even though they're a stranger to me, but if they're in the body of Christ or not yet saved and still asking for money, you know, I still, what I've done in, is always, if we, we help who we can and we feel, if we feel led to, if we, if we don't feel led to, then what we've done is we've always pointed them to the website where there are free downloads. They can free down Bible topics, magazines, audios and videos free, for free. And so that we just don't leave them with nothing. We do what we can with what we have. So praise God. And, and, um, but that's, that was our heart, right? right and that's still our heart that we, what we do, how we treat people as unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a pretty practical thing, but that's how we've done it. All right. And um, faithful are chosen for ministry. Let's turn back to 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. Now this is Paul writing to Timothy and he says, verse 12, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Hallelujah. And the Amplified says, I give thanks to him who has granted me the needed strength to make me able for this, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he has judged and counted me faithful and trustworthy, appointing me to this stewardship of the ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we need to be faithful ministers of the Lord. Let's turn back to Colossians chapter 1, verse 7. And it says here, as you also learned of Ephaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you, a faithful minister of Christ. So this man's a faithful minister. And Colossians chapter 4, it also says here in verses 7 and 9, it says here, And all my state shall Tychicus declare unto you, who is a beloved brother, and a faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. And verse 9, with Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you, they shall make known unto you all things which are done here. So here they are, two faithful men in the ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is faithful. Hallelujah. And we are faithful. Now, faithful elders, we're nearly there. First Timothy chapter 5. So we have um, people chosen for ministry and there are faithful ministries and there are faithful elders. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. The Amplified says, let the elders who perform their duties of their office well be considered doubly worthy of honor and an adequate financial support especially those who labor faithfully in preaching and teaching. The workman is worthy of his hire. Hallelujah. And God does allow the ministries, the use of the tithe, because our, our job is to labor in the word, to prepare the word, to gather the word, to gather the meat to, and present it. Hallelujah. That's, that's what we do as unto the Lord. And just like people go out and have a job and they get paid, uh, you know, we're to wait on the Lord, preparing on his word, praying and, and, um, and he allows us to use the, the tithe money. And that was set up and we, that's all the way through the Bible and in the book of Acts, you know, they said, we're not going to wait on tables. We're, our job is to wait on the word of God. Hallelujah. Not that we can't wait on tables because the waiting on tables is actually proving yourself faithful. And often you'll do the little things and all ministries have done it, I'm sure. You don't just come instantly a ministry. You are proven in the little things and you are faithful in the little things 
and you are promoted by God. Promotion comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, faithful teachers, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. It says here, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And the Amplified says, And the instruction which you have heard from me, along with many witnesses, transmit and entrust as a deposit to reliable and faithful men who will be competent and qualified to teach others also. So hallelujah, as the word's going out, it's equipping you, it's qualifying you, it's preparing you for what God's got planned ahead in your life. Hallelujah, praise God. All right, and um, nearly there, faithful unto death. <laughs> Let's turn to Revelation chapter two. There are many people throughout the world, even this very day that may have uh, passed away for their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, and God sees it, Revelation 2, verse 10. And we read here, it says, Revelation 2, verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. And the Amplified says, Fear nothing that you're about to suffer. Dismiss your dread and your fears. Behold, the devil is indeed about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested and proved and critically appraised. And for 10 days you will have affliction. Be loyally faithful unto death even if it must if you must die for it and i will give you the crown of life no one knows their end time sometimes and people find themselves in different situations living in different parts of the world and god knows and so each one of us life is very precious and so we need to make the most of each life the most of each day as unto the Lord. Hallelujah. And then finally, we read in Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 14. And we read here. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is the Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in summary, now is the time. And if we desire to ride with Christ at his return, then we need to be called, chosen and faithful. And everyone said, Amen.